The following session was recorded live in San Antonio, Texas for the 2003 Color Lab Conference. This is tape number 31, Advanced Challenge Session. All right, this is the Advanced and Challenge Interest Session. Uh, my name is Ed Foote. I'm the moderator. Our panelists are Daryl Lipscomb from Texas and Dave Towery from uh, Arizona, uh, Arkansas, excuse me, are from Arkansas. And what we're going to do here, we're going to discuss uh, uh, different approaches for teaching, both advanced and C1, and also expanding on positions that are of interest to dancers in the dancing part of advanced and C1. Let me ask of those that are here in the hall, how many of you call C1? So we know what the percentage is. Okay, it's half. All right, so half call only advance, and half are also calling C1. All right, we'll begin, and we're going to have um, each of us will discuss what we're going to discuss for uh, for a few minutes, and then we'll open it up to uh, questions. If you have any questions on anything, uh, the, that'll be the time uh, to do it, either relating to what we've said or um, or anything. All right, uh, which Dave Towery is going to go first. During the course of, of teaching uh, advanced or C1, uh, our certain uh, prime aspect is to get getting the dancers to perform the calls, concepts, and so forth from a relatively quote quote standard position. They have to be able to walk before they can run. But also, we do need to make them aware that there are more than one application of the concepts and the calls. And uh, so, and, and I don't mean to go overboard on it, guys. You know, we, we can sit here and we can take one call and we can blow it into oblivion. But there's certainly no reason for that. The, the whole idea is for the dancers to dance and the dancers to win. Because if the dancers don't win, we don't have a dance. But also we've got to teach them and to dance and perform the calls correctly. That, that's our obligation. So uh, I, I like to uh, look at it as kind of delving into the definition aspect. Again, not going overboard, but making the dancers realize and visualize that there is more than one way to do these calls and that we do look it upon as their responsibility to learn the definition. We can lead them to the water, but, you know, they've got to learn the definitions. Otherwise... They're going to go dance to Ed, and they're not going to have a fighting chance. His eyes are rolling around again. <laughs> so uh, in, in, in my presentation, what I do is, is I like to com combine uh, some of the calls and with the concepts uh, and, and, and do work them that way. And that way they get some rather fluid with some of the calls and concepts. And Daryl and I were just talking before we started. Uh, one of the things I like to do is to take a, say for instance, a right-handed two-faced line between two right-handed mini waves. Work the centers as a couple, and everybody else work normally. And do follow your neighbors, do grand remakes, uh, that kind of thing. That way, not only are they getting a concept, but they're also getting calls too from a little bit other than just standard formations. Pardon me? Sure. Uh, have we got enough to make? Can we make a square? Okay. Uh, let's just have the heads pair off. Okay. Uh, everybody pass in. All right. Everybody touch one quarter. The centers counter rotate a quarter. Good. Same pair quarter through. There we go. Just right there. Same pair swing through and switch the wave. Go right there. Good. And this is the setup I'm talking about where we have a, a two faced line between two little right handed mini waves. All right. Now, from right here, if we were to do a grand folly your neighbor. Okay. So, everybody, those that are facing on the diagonal, extend, cast three quarters, the ends fold and roll. You stay together as a couple, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Did I did I not say that? 
Oh, okay. Well, I wanted the centers to work as a couple. Okay. Now, with the center still working as a couple, do a left grand swing through. There we are. Now, with, with those that are as a couple still working as a couple, everybody with your left hand hinge. All right. Then all eight circulate. All right. Now, with that couple still working as a couple, do a left grand quarter through. Good. The center four, do a wheel and deal and star through while the others hinge. All right. Uh, let's see. You're the. Okay. <laughs> All right. Everybody do a partner trade, roll, and see you're right back in a normal line. Okay. Let's look at something else. Huh? Oh, the girls together? Okay. Pass through, wheel and deal, and spread. This ought to create a little havoc. Half breed through. <laughs> okay. Then uh, everybody touch one quarter. Centers counter rotate a quarter. Same pair of follow through. I could get away with that with that bunch. Okay. Now, uh, with the centers working as a couple, all eight circulate. Those as a couple stay together. Is it still work as a couple? See, we lost somebody. There we go. Good. Now, with the with those as a couple still working as a couple, uh, everybody do a grand remake. Hinge, left hands trade, right hands cast three. Three, three, three. Oh, oh, whoops. A little premature landing there. Good. Now all eight circulate. <laughs> all eight walk and dodge. There we are. The center's wheel and deal. The other's trade. All right. Center's pass through. Huh? So that's just a little sampler right there. You want to add anything to that, Ed? Keep going? Okay. Uh, beer to the left. All right, Ferris wheel. Oh, you just checking? Do a double pass through. The leads wheel around. Right, good. There we go. Now, uh, veer to the left, and everybody veer to the right. Now the centers swing through while the outside single wheel. Okay. Now, we can have the outside dancers work in a, a tandem where they have a leader trader. It's just like working together as a couple, except rather than being side by side, you're in a tandem. Okay? And uh, let's have the center switch the wave. Right there. Now, with the outsides working tandem and the centers working as a couple, everybody scoot back. There we are. <laughs> now, the center four cross fire while the other zigzag, and the zigzaggers hinge. All eight circulate. Good. Everybody trade, roll, and we should have a good line here again. Okay? Everybody pass through, wheel and deal. I don't even remember who your corners were now, nor does it make any difference. All right. Now, the centers, uh, let's see, let's have everybody do a double pass through. All right. Now the center's right roll to a wave while the others, while the others single wheel. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and do your single wheel. Yeah, you can't pick out the part you don't like. It's right behind her. Good. Now the center wave switch the wave. Good. Now this with the center's working as a couple and the outside's working tandem. Scoot back. There you go. There we are. Right there. Good. Now, the center four cross rolled a wave while the other zigzag. Just turn the other way. Jay, turn, turn the other way. Right there. 
fit. Now, all boys run around a girl. Head boys and the girl you have bend the line. Good. Same pair past the ocean, the other single wheel, and you're right into a diamond right there. Yeah, just right, right back behind her. Right, right there. Good. Everybody, everybody cut your diamond. That's good. Recycle. That'll, that'll work on it. Veer to the left. There we are. Now, Ferris wheel. And the centers do a bow walk bell dodge. Now we have the outsides working as a couple and the centers working in tandem. So we've just switched it around just a little bit. Is there a name for it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We are doing challenge two, aren't we? This is called Siamese. It's uh, C1. It's on C1. So whenever you have some of the people working as a couple and some of them working in tandem, the name for that is in Siamese. So we're going to preface it now by just saying in Siamese. Okay? In Siamese, scoot back. Those in, a, in the tandem go out, turn through the others. Now the outside dancers have to remember to be centered up on those two centered dancers because that's where your spots were. Okay? Now, the outside's clover. The center's counter-rotate and spread. The center four past the ocean. Sometime tonight. <laughs> and flip your diamond. Good. Now everybody swing through. In roll circulate. Centers run. Ferris wheel. The centers do a bow walk bell dodge. Now, one of the things that uh, Daryl and I had been working with our C1 groups uh, was we used a, a concept where we were going to make the first part of the call in Siamese and then finish the call normally. And, uh, so, and so let's have everybody in Siamese scoot back And then we're going to finish, yeah, right after, we're going to finish a ramble. So the outsides clover away, yeah, clover away, meet and slide through, while the centers single wheel to face and slide through. It leaves you in a nice little setup right here. The girls should have left hands and the boys have right hands. <laughs> Center column of six, walk and dodge. There we are. Now, in the wave recycle, the others trade and roll. Good. The centers pass through, and the outside start a split square through three. Uno, dos, tres. Good. Now everybody do a partner trade. Touch one quarter, and the girls roll. All right. And boys on the diagonal. Uh, just look in her ear. Yeah. Boys on a diagonal start a split square through two. Face into the box, left pull by. Uh, yes. <laughs> We're renaming everything in here. Actually, that would be the, the boys start a magic split square through two. And we can expand a little bit on that too. Okay. Uh, every, wait a minute. Hold on. Here comes Daryl Lipscomb. I just wanted to throw this in. Uh, we were talking about this at one of our callers' meetings down south, and Larry Letson was standing there, and he's like, whoa. And Larry used this at his plus dance and at his advanced dance, and he, see, he said, I had tremendous success with it. And, he's, and the way he did it, uh, he just simply said, boys, on the diagonal, start a split square through two, just like Dave did. And Larry said, man, that's the neatest thing I've seen. And so then, you know, we start playing around with it a little bit more. But anyway, that's... And see, if you don't make it magic, so you can go more than two hands. <laughs> okay, uh, bend the line. Okay, everybody pass through. Shake down to the right. Well, because... Be, uh, be, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Nasser, a magic involves a two set of magic lines across a set, and when you get to the next hand, the third hand, that would involve everybody crossing the magic set, 
and it would involve doing either stars or cross trail throughs to perform the next hand. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, everybody, touch one quarter. All right. Uh, split counter rotate a quarter in the girl's roll. Okay. See there. Yeah. Okay. Now we can again we can expand on that and 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 Daryl's been using this with a lot of success and I have too. Uh, boys start a magic split Dixie style to a wave. So turn and face in, do a left touch quarter, and it'll put you right in a left-handed column. Right? All eight circulate, each box four peel and trail. Swing through. All eight counter rotate. Don't, don't hurt each other. <laughs> boys run around the girls. <laughs> Couples circulate. All right, bend the line. That, and that's all I had to show you guys. We've taken just some of the basic calls, you know, and and by adding just a little flavor to it, but we have emphasized definition also. So, and this is what I'm talking about. It, it, I think it makes the dance a lot more flavorful. It's more enjoyable to the dancers because they're not stuck in the rut of doing everything just plain vanilla each time and it, it, it makes them aware it makes them aware of their formation their positioning and the definition that's all i have to add okay thank you thank you to the square okay next we'll have daryl lipscomb by the way anytime anybody has any questions or comments from the floor there is a mic up here and since the session is being taped you must use the mic first First of all, my name's Lynn Webster, and what he was doing was really nice, but I probably wouldn't do that the whole night. I would maybe oh, no. do that one tip and use that as a workshop tip, something to play with and have fun with. Exactly. You know, there's, there is such a thing as overkill. Uh, what I would just want to touch base on has a lot to do with what Dave was doing there, and not only uh, as you move up the list through the levels or move up the, the ladder of levels, uh, where we're emphasizing the, the definitions of calls. I, anybody who dances to me much knows that I really love formations. And uh, I like formations within formations. And uh, if, for example, I were teaching an advanced class, uh, an A1 class, immediately I would try to start uh, utilizing the calls that they know at the mainstreaming, the plus level, within different formations that they're used to to try to here again i think it it, uh, it solidifies their knowledge of that definition but at the same time it makes them aware of all the different formations that are created at different times within a square and uh i find that i have a lot of success using that not only at just the advanced level but i'll even use it a lot at the plus level and if i and depending upon the group that i may be calling mainstream to i may use it there as well um, for example all the plus dancers by the time they are taking advanced lessons they know what a diamond is and they certainly know what a box of four is and as all of us know an hourglass is just a combination of a diamond and a box. It's a uh, box. It's a diamond within a box of four. And so I'll do a lot of things to emphasize the box movement. I'll do things to emphasize the diamond movements in there. And then I may take and uh, at some point in time put them in a galaxy formation, which we know is a box within a diamond, and uh, and then do the same thing in there. Uh, I like to use uh, even at the plus level. I use. I use the term distorted a lot. Um, I'll take use distorted diamonds. Once I, and I found that once I explain it to them where their diamond is, they understand then they know what the word distorted means. They know how to use it within their diamond. And then and then I like to expand from there. I like to use uh, distorted ocean waves, which uh, anyone who works C2 knows that that disconnects. And I feel like in my thinking, if I can. If I can get the dancers to just see and recognize their formations, I can get them to do, it's unbelievable what you can get them to do 
within those formations. Um, I like to take, one of the favorite things that I like to do is I like to take a tidal wave, that's a boy, girl, girl, boy, boy, girl, girl, boy, tidal wave. And what we have is we've got, uh, let's say we've got the very center two men holding left hands, and we've got a guy on the outside holding right hands, uh, or not holding right, with his right hand toward the center, and then we have two ladies in between them. And what I like to do with the dancers at that point, let's face it, if they're just coming into the advanced level, they may or may not be doing fan the top real well. And I find that, that this kind of kills two birds with one stone. I'll, stone. I like to ask the dancers, I'll say, men, in your distorted right-hand wave, and I give them a chance to see it, and I'll ask them to fan the top to a normal ocean wave. And that takes, that puts the men immediately in a, in a wave of four that they're accustomed to, and it leaves the two ladies out uh, on the wings, so to speak, with right hand mini waves. And then at that point, I like to, you can have the girls do many things, hinge, whatever, but I like to ask the girls to explode. And it, that immediately puts them in a quarter tag. And we've taken a, a tidal wave that they're used to at the plus level, and we've immediately moved them from a tidal wave to a quarter tag. And, there's, and as we know, there's so many things we can do from a quarter tag. And what that did, it emphasized the definition of fan the top for those men and it also helps solidify and explode for the ladies because a lot of times at the plus level we may not do explodes from that type setup. But uh, like I say, I just love, I love to just try to see how many formations I can find within formations and have the dancers working within those particular formations. Um, let's see, I, well, from again, say from hourglasses where you have the diamond in the center and maybe the ladies out on the points. And, and here again, the dancers at this point in time don't even have to know what an hourglass is. They don't need to know the term hourglass because I can work the diamond dancers within the diamond and I can work the, point, uh, the box dancers within the box. And I might, at something like that, I might say, boys in your big diamond circulate, girls in your big box walk and dodge to footsteps. And um, as we know there, that would put all the girls looking out at that point. And then I might have the girls do a partner trade so they're facing back in. And, while I, and always try while I'm doing this, always try to work one formation and then let the next formation do something so that they're not falling asleep there. And uh, once I get, say, the ladies facing back in on the points of that hourglass, I might ask them, girls in your big box square through three or square through two or whatever or touch a quarter whatever you know and just I just keep trying to find formations within formations to work and to a degree I think that's what Dave was really doing right there he took a a, a quarter line formation quarter quarter line yeah and and he used that quarter line formation as a column of six literally and uh, I think it really helps to solidify the dancer's knowledge in the definitions. But at the same time, what I really like is it's got them looking like, you know, once they start becoming aware of all this, it's amazing to watch them look at the squares as they're dancing along. And every once in a while, you'll see it eyes get real bright, like, ooh, looky here what we have right here we could do, you know. And uh, that's what I like to do. And in fact, like I say, when I teach, that's one of the first things that I start teaching, trying to teach the dancers. It's not necessarily, I say teach, it's trying to get them aware of all the formations within formations and not to be afraid you know to work within those formations like i say i use the term distorted an awful lot because uh uh and it it can identify so many different formations out there um i think that's a word that like i say once you've introduced it to the dancers they understand then what you're talking about uh does anybody have any little favorite tricks that they like to do within formations okay do we want to do that can we get a square and we'll just kind of sure right yeah we'll we'll get a square up and i'm not going to worry about head or corners and all of that i'll just try to keep the late oh boy gee whiz you got oh we need one more body don't we boy robert uh just do a lot of writing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I get it. Okay. Uh, just heads pair off, face your corner. Everybody touch a quarter. All right. Uh, let's do an all eight circulate. Lock it. Hinge. 
circulate once and a half. All right, now the center two ladies trade and spread apart. Are y'all ladies or guys? Center two trade and spread apart. Okay, I wasn't sure. Okay, now obviously we've got uh, a galaxy at this point. The dancers don't need to know that. They don't need to know they're in a galaxy. All they need to know is that we have an outside diamond around the outside and we have a center box of four in the middle. Uh, while the outside diamond does a big circulate and roll, the center four walk and dodge. Okay, at this point I like uh, center four work as a couple with the, with the dancer you see, touch a quarter. Those center two dancers trade. Now, the center two men extend to the outside man. You have a left. Uh, do a left quarter through while the others do a big wheel and deal around the outside. The center wave, explode the wave. Right, everybody touch a quarter. Split circulate. Split counter rotate. Circulate once and a half. And the four men trade and spread apart. I assume they're together. No, okay. Whoever trade and spread. Yeah, whoever you guys are, trade and spread. Like I said, I wasn't going to try to keep track of ladies and men. Okay. Now we've got the hourglass. And uh, at this point, uh, the diamonds circulate. Those in the big box walk and dodge. All right. Those in the diamond cut the diamond. And the same for bend the line. You four pass the ocean and lock it while the others slide together, trade and roll. Those in the wave, explode the wave. Now, I like, some may disagree with me, but I like from right here, and I have had no problems getting dancers at the advanced level to do this. I love, I'll say, in your any hand ocean wave. And I love to do swing throughs. And I, I like those, I think, a little more than I do the quarter through because it gets them, for some reason I find it keeps them well, the dancers will do an any hand quarter through, and it seems like if I ever call an any hand swing through, they want to do an any hand quarter through. So I always use the any hand swing throughs. Everybody in your any hand ocean wave swing through, trade with any hand, Sunder's partner trade. And that's just exactly how I say it to the dancers. Everybody step to a tidal wave. All right, uh, men, are you a man? You're, no, you're a girl, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna identify the center two men and the outside girl in that distorted right hand wave, fan the top to a normal wave. The other dancers explode. And that was what I was talking about a while ago on, on utilizing the explode. Um, extend, lock it. All right. Those holding left hands, I don't care who you are. You have a distorted left hand ocean wave. All right. In that distorted wave, trade the wave. They'll take you to right hands. And that's just about exactly the way I would say it to an advanced group. As couples swing through. All right. Now, okay, now let's take, um, I might take girls, okay, girls are holding, no, they're not either, okay, yeah, I got you, okay, let's just take, uh, yeah, he, I thought he was, yeah, okay, that center boy and the girl you have by the right hand, okay, oh, you're a girl, oh, okay, this, he's, oh, okay, oh, we got all the boys, you're a boy? Thanks. Oh, there, there. Okay. All right. All right. Just center, just the center two face line. Do a half tag the line. Okay. The others do a single wheel. The outsides work around the outside of the square and counter rotate one quarter. Just promenade and take a left hand. Here again, that's just the way I would say it if I were doing that at advanced level. And and you know, it's something different for the dancers. Have you know, they'll do it in a heartbeat without even thinking about it. Um, does anybody have any little formation within formations that y'all like to use? Uh, Nasa Shukar, you mentioned in your speech or, or dissertation distorted diamonds, and, and I think I know what that is, but I'd like to see you demonstrate okay. it. All right. Um, are all the girls the centers right now? Is that what we have? No, you're a girl. So we have girls together. Okay. Everybody do a left quarter through. All right. Do one more left quarter through, and I think that ought to put all the men in the middle now. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, trade the wave. Let's just get to a right-hand wave real quick. All right. Um, swing through. And let's switch to a diamond. Do a six by two AC DC. Okay, now where's all my ladies at? Okay, I see them right here. I can never describe. Where's all the men at? Okay, all the men, okay. Um, wait a minute, let's see. That's not what I wanted here. You guys are guys. And they're guys. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, they were there. Yeah, okay, men, you have a distorted diamond right now. Okay, if you'll raise your hands, you can see it around the outside. 
Right? Men, if you would, distorted diamond circulate right in the footsteps. For some, it's quick. For others, it's a long ways. Okay? Everybody do a diamond circulate. Okay? Uh, diamond circulate one more, if you would. Now we have the ladies in that distorted diamond. Ladies, in your distorted diamond, circulate right into footsteps. Everybody flip the diamond. And of course, you can take those and, and you can apply them. You can probably find some other places to apply them from, but that's basically what I, the way I would use a distorted diamond. Does anybody have any other formations within formations? Because I love them. Well, one thing I like to do is I call up to like C2, and I can take a C2 concept like cross concentric and get an advanced floor to do it. Like, for instance, if I could get a tidal wave, let's see. Yeah, come on in. Okay, everybody lock it. Okay, do a grand swing through. Grand swing through again. Okay, where are the boys? Okay, boys or centers run around the ends. Each center of each wave run around the ends. Okay. Yeah. So what I want is a tidal two-faced line. Well, what I can do is I can have the boys Boys, in your two-faced line, wheel and deal to face and back out of there. Girls slide in, and in your two-faced line, wheel and deal. So I've just done a cross-concentric wheel and deal, but they've done it and felt comfortable. One other thing I try to do when I do that is give them something they know after that. Like if I do a cross-concentric recycle, I might have the center wave swing through instead of doing the recycle part, and then I call a chain reaction from a normal, not half sachet setup, and then they feel kind of like they won. And so I don't call too much of that stuff, but I do something, but then I give them something that feels comfortable afterwards. you got to keep the dancers comfortable and moving. And uh, anything to break up, you know, that's... Anybody got anything else like that that they like to use within formations, within formations? Good old salesman. <laughs> anything else from anybody there? All right. Um, yeah, Dale. Ends what? Okay, let's ends trade and roll. Center step to wave, okay? Uh, we have the centers uh, trade and roll, so they're facing on the end. The center step to a wave, so we have... Facing diamonds, um, we have funny diamonds, but we also have on the center six, we have some interlocked triangles. I'm the point, I'm the center girl, I'm the center point to the, the boy-based triangle. The other, the outside girl, the end of the wave is ignored. A boy, a boy couple-based triangle. I mean, you can get it as a wave-based or things like that. Triangle circulates. Well, I mean, you'd have to rearrange the sequence, I guess. Okay, Daryl, anything else? Uh, let's see. Somebody touched on something right there. Let me check my note right here just a second. Somebody said something that rang a bell with me. I wrote it down. Uh, hmm. Oh, diamonds. You were talking about diamonds right here. You're... Uh, Basically, what at C2 they'd call funny diamonds or, or irregular diamonds or whatever have you. But uh, I like to use these with the dancers here again to emphasize that they are in a diamond and that it, it is an irregular diamond. And I like, might like to say uh, just the dancers facing in the diamond do a diamond circulate. And all they've done is a funny diamond circulate, obviously. And then, of course, it gives you something easier to work with, Sunder's half tag. You know, and of course you're out of it in a heartbeat. But, but uh, the thing, basically what I'm trying to say is I like to get the dancers in different types of formations from what they're accustomed to and then try to do something within that formation that they can easily see. As just then in that case, the funny diamonds or the irregular diamonds where only some people were doing the diamond circulate. Uh, and that's really basically what I wanted to present was just, you know, talk about the formations within formations, uh, how to utilize them and introduce them to the dancers as we're trying to build their uh, knowledge of the definition as well. 
And like I say, you're, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone that way. And if no one has anything else to interject there, I'll give the mic to Ed. Okay, thank you to the square. Okay, Dave had to leave because he's uh, catching a plane. Uh, so we're going to carry on here. I want to discuss uh, a couple things. Um, first of all, in terms of teaching, um, teaching A1, uh, I always like to to champion my rule of thumb. We know that uh, uh, we know that A1 dancers are supposed to know plus and mainstream DVD, but unfortunately, they never get it anywhere. There's no way to get it at regular open dances, and even if they have a if they go to a a special DVD workshop, it's usually so watered down because it's open to the whole world that they probably don't get what is really needed for A1 at these at these open to the whole world DVD workshops. So I always like to recommend that callers when they're teaching an A1 class, for every advanced call taught, go back and reteach one mainstream and one plus call. Now some callers say, well, uh, I'm a purist, so I want to I want to do that first. I'm going to go back and show them all the mainstream and plus DVD before I ever show them one advanced call, because that's the normal order of progression it should be. Well, unfortunately, the dancers are there to hear quote new names. So if a caller only shows them names that they know from different positions, they're going to feel frustrated because they're not getting any of this juicy new names that they know are on the A1 list. So the way to compromise that and solve both problems is you go ahead and teach them some new names, the calls on the A1 list, but for every A1 call you teach them, you go back and review a mainstream or a plus call DVD. Now the nice thing is that many of the calls on mainstream particularly don't lend themselves to DVD. I mean, two ladies chain and square identification and all this kind of thing. And I've determined that there are about 35 mainstream and plus calls that really need heavy work DVD. And that's it. If you cover those 35, you, they pretty much have it. And lo and behold, there are 35 calls on the A1 list. So therefore, if you do one mainstream or plus call, every time you show an advanced call, by the time you are done teaching A1, you will have completed this DVD review of mainstream and plus. Fine, then what happens when you just start calling A1 or and A2? Lots of callers become enamored with the name, with the names on the list, and they forget about ever calling mainstream or plus DVD. Uh, even if they've taught it in class, they just forget it because they're so keyed in on the, tuned into the names on the advanced list. So my personal recommendation is that at an A1 dance, 20% of the material is mainstream and plus DVD. And that at an A2 dance, 10% is mainstream or plus DVD. And I find that having a benchmark of a, of a percentage then helps us guide and remember to actually be doing mainstream and plus DVD when we call these dances. To me, there is nothing more ridiculous than going in and calling an A2 dance and the dancers cannot do all eight circulate from inverted lines. To me, that's just ridiculous. Coming back to uh, A1, when, you, when you're doing your review on mainstream and plus DVD, there are three families that are key to work. Circulates, runs, and trades. Now you may say, well, how can you DVD run? I mean, run is just run. But what about run to the left? Most people don't get that at mainstream or plus. So we do runs, don't want to do a lot of left hand, left people running to the left. From a left hand wave, ends run. Or even a right hand wave, ends run. How many times at mainstream or plus do you hear ends run? Very rare. So that's a kind of, that would be a theme at of, of DVD uh, mainstream working runs. Trades, we can 
just trade all over the place. You can trade with the person beside you. Uh, trade the wave, everybody has a plus, so that's uh, that's not a factor. Uh, but people facing different directions. What if, what if people are in a column, just say, with your partner, trade, swing half. Do they do that? Do they know where to stop? <laughs> so circulates, runs, and trades are the three big families to emphasize when teaching A1, and then using circulation runs trade or run and trade through your program. Now I'd like to get a square up if I could. And let's have the heads, heads lead to the right, veer to the left, and bend the line, pass through. Now we know a call early on A1 is explode the line. And I rarely see anybody do a good explode the line for two reasons. One, the setters forget the step forward or they may only take a little baby step forward. And if the setters only take a baby step forward or don't step forward at all, obviously then everybody crashes. The ends are going to crash into them. Let's do an explode the line. And of course, you all did it perfectly, naturally. <coughs> but what I've found that I have to tell people invariably, even if they're graduated A2 dancers for, for a year, a lot of them still are not doing explode the line smoothly. So I tell them the way to do explode the line smoothly is, of course, you must know whether you are a center or an end. Because if you're a center, you will take a giant step forward, not a baby step. But if you are an end, you will rock backwards at the same time that the center step forward. And by doing this, this will completely clear the ends away from the centers, and now everybody can do a, a smooth pull by. So if the ends rock backward at the same time the center step forward, go explode the line, and that instantly makes explode the line work smooth. Very important to tell our dancers that because otherwise they may never, they say, well, center's supposed to step forward, I know that, and as an end, I just quarter and pull by. And that may be the techni technical definition, but the key to get it to dance smooth is that the ends rock backwards. That's a key to tell the dancers, explode the line again. All right, wheel and deal. Centers make an ocean wave. <coughs> Moving on to C1, one of my questions. Oh, let's get the mic. What are you doing the ends out? What are you doing the ends out inverted line? The, say the, the line facing out and the ends you turn back. What do I do from there? Or just choreography, or back. yeah, the ends rock back. I mean, oh, I see what you mean. All right, the ends rock back. All right. the e extend. Thing. Everybody, extend here and explode the wave, and the um, the ends do a U-turn back. All right. And the question is, from an inverted line with the centers looking out and the ends looking in, what's going to happen here if the ends rock back? Obviously, it's a big crash. So the rule is, the ends only rock back if you're all facing the same way. That's a good point. Uh, I forget to, to mention that, but that's the key. The ends only rock back if everybody's facing facing the same way. The trick that our caller does when he's teaching it, he teaches them step and slide first, and then he uses the step and slide as his lead into the explode the wave. You all do a step and slide face and then pull by. So that works. Okay. Um, If we go on to um, C1, you had a moment ago, you had a, a quarter tag. Can I ask you how you, uh, if, from the quarter tag, if you call chain reaction, can I ask you how you get the person that messes everything up to stand still? I always tell them this one person is going to screw things up. Well, sorry, mess things up, but they keep on for the tape. Um, well, they have to have discipline, and people yeah, no, but how don't do you, have a lot how of discipline. How do you help give them that discipline? One year I was working tandem base triangles and I was having a terrible time getting the base of the triangle instead of just stepping forward they always wanted to step forward and turn always wanted to step forward and turn 
And I was, boy, I was at wit's end. I'd done everything I could think of. And so I finally, out of desperation, I said, okay, look, such and such, guys, you're the trailing base of that triangle. If you do anything other than step straight ahead, if you even act like you're going to think you're going to turn, your pants are going to fall off. And it worked. They never, they did it correctly the rest of the day. Well, I tell, at one of our callers meetings, Jerry Story was talking about, God, he said, I thought I was going to go crazy tonight. The dancers were just, I was teaching the beginners square through, and he says, invariably, that one guy wants to always courtesy turn that girl. He said, I did everything I could think of, and it never, I could never get them to stop the courtesy turn. So I laughed, and I told him what happened to me, and I said, try this. He laughed, yeah, 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 sure. Well, the next week at the meeting, he says, you know what? That worked. And so when I do chain reaction, just as you're talking right there, that's exactly how I do it. I lead them in. I try to make a big joke of it. And I say, now that outside dancer that's not facing someone directly, if you even act like, you, if you even act like you're going to try to move before that center dancer steps out and takes you by the hand, your pants fall off. What it is about it, I don't know. But we have had, you know, it gets the dancers laugh. And i tell you what I think it does. I think it relaxes the dancers. It gets them kind of loose and not thinking so hard. And they do it so much better that way. To this day, when I go in and call a chain reaction that involves that outside dancer standing still, if I see the first time I call it, I laugh, I kid with them, and I tell them just exactly what I did. And I'm amazed at the success it brings. If anyone had told me that, I'd have looked at them and said, yeah, right. Okay, so try that. Uh, we'll let you square up, and then um, <coughs> for a 1C1 call here, heads past the ocean. Going to look at the call scoot and plenty, and really going to look at just plenty. So let's do the scoot back part of the scoot and plenty so we're done with that. So now we have a couple look, couples looking out in the wave in the middle. Okay. We know that the next part is that the wave will do a step and fold, and the outsides will quarter right and counter rotate. So go ahead, let's do that. Now the key at this point, at this point, some dancers have been trained to say, "Well, everybody, wait till we see the box. I see the box of four, and now we take off." But that is not often good enough. Because the box of four is often so big that even though you see it, by the time people do two circulates, the box is becoming distorted and people lose their spot. The key is that the folder of the step and folding people in the middle does a very sharp fold so that that person is very close to the back of the stepper. So go ahead and make your adjustment here. And you can see you had to make a full step adjustment. Now, if the center four do a very tight step and fold, that forces the outsides to be very close. And now the box is nice and close and can circulate easily. But if you have a big expanded box of four and you try to do the circulates, people lose it. Even though they say, well, I see the box, I see you, now everybody go but it's too big, and, and by the time they get to the first circulate, they've already lost uh, perspective. Okay, go ahead, finish the plenty. Two box circulates, and uh, okay, and then right roll, and okay. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do it again, and this time, and now I, sometimes the people, and doing a thing like Daryl said, not with the pants falling down, but uh, uh, people say, well, how, how, how tight should the step and fold be? And I say that when the end, the, the center does the step, but the end doing the fold, the folder, the fold should be so close that you can breathe on the back of the neck of the stepper. Of course, that gets everybody excited. They want to do that, and but then that accomplishes the whole thing. right? All right, so go ahead, do the scoot back. All right. Outsides, go ahead and do your quarter right and counter rotate. And in the middle, a very tight step and fold to breathe on the neck. Now, see, how, see where you are compared to everybody else? You're way back there. See, there's his neck. Breathe on it. Oh, they can, you, you're, you, the personal space. There's no personal space at C1. 
<laughs> okay, so now he can see where she's off kilter from everybody else. She's too far back, right? Look at this group of four is nice. This one's a little too big. <laughs> That's it's backwards to make up for it on the circulates. You'll lose it on the circulates. Now I recognize that a good dancer like you will not lose it, but we're talking about the average dancer. All right, you and one guy want to do both the step and fold. Well, that's unfortunate. You know, that's just, you have to live with that. All right, so that's all I wanted. I mean, we know how to finish off the, the, the plenty, so we don't have to do that. The whole thing I'm emphasizing is the folder does a very sharp fold. One other thing I should mention, of course, the stepper should do a baby step. Because if the stepper does a giant step, that's going to spread the group of four out. So the stepper has some responsibility here too, a very baby step. Now, one other thing, we know the outsides have done the quarter right and counter rotate, so now we have our two boxes of fours. Some groups, some callers train their groups to say, nobody move till everybody's at this spot, and somebody say go, and then they do it. And that's fine, that's good, it works perfect. But if you don't train your dancers that way, if you don't tell them, well, Nobody moved. You get to the box of four. When does the box of four start to do the two circulates? If there is no uniform agreement about making an announcement, I see the box of four if you're off dancing at a convention or something with people you don't know. The key is that the stepper is the controlling person. The stepper never... Is, he doesn't start to move until the trailing outside person has turned a corner and taken the hand. The stepper is the controller of the group of four. And if that stepper doesn't move on the box circulate until the trailing outside dancer is up with the right hand, then everything's going to go good. But the trouble is, nobody likes to look out. Nobody, nobody likes to be looking out away from the world. And so the stepper says, Oh, I, I better get going kind of quick here because I feel a little left out. I'm not looking at anybody. And if the stepper takes off too early, that distorts the box of four because the trailing person hasn't turned a corner yet, and that can lead to this to the unraveling of the box of four, and it kind of becomes a, a mass of jello there. Okay, any does anybody else have any comments on Scoot and Plenty since we were in the Scoot and Plenty? Okay, thank you to the square. Uh, before they leave, oh, okay. I want to kind of follow up on, Robert, what you were talking about for just a second. Would you all just give me two facing lines of four? Any way you want to do it? Yeah, normal facing lines of four. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to worry about sex or anything right here. I just want two facing lines of four. Everybody touch a quarter, and in the column circulate once and a half. All right. Now, I like to start kind of prepping them for chain reaction from right here. Center six, if you would, do a six walk and dodge. Same six partner trade, and the very center two dancers do a U turn back. All right, now, this is where I like to start teaching the chain reaction to the dancers. And I like to say, the very center two dancers and who you're facing, you're going to start, everybody will finish a chain reaction. So those two dancers will pass through. All right, now, that brings our two dancers to the handhole here. They can now hinge. Here's our three stars, too many stars and one star. Set our star turn a quarter while the others trade. Those who meet cast three quarter, and boom. Now, I use that same method if I want to teach a chain reaction or get a floor to doing a chain reaction from a left-handed quarter tag. That's I'll bring them and I'll do a few of these with them first because it, it gives them at least a feel for how the call is going to start. And then invariably at a point in time when you get them to the full quarter tag, you got to remind that end dancer, hey, you, you got to get around the corner. And I try to explain to them, you know, once that end dancer has promenaded the one quarter or counter rotated, that's basically what you have when you do the chain reaction, you know, from the quarter tag. Uh, recycle, veer to the left, and let's do a Ferris wheel. All right. Yes. Okay, uh, let me do this first. Center four, veer left, if you would. Now the center, t the end two dancers, Go ahead and promenade one quarter around the outside. This is exactly where I, where we're at, where we were at when I did the column of six. You know, from the column of eight, circulate one and a half and all. Okay, and I had those facing start. Okay, let's do that. Center dancer and who are you facing? Start chain reaction. Everybody finish. Okay, outsides trade. 
and do a push cast. See, it's a little different here. I, I didn't get it set up quite right, but it, but you see what I'm trying to trying to emphasize here. Okay, uh, everybody, just make a line facing in now. All right, do a left touch a quarter. All right, and the column circulate once and a half. Center six walk and dodge, and the same six trade, and the very center two dancers do a U-turn back. Now, this would be our, if I wanted to work the left-handed chain reaction, this is where I would start right here. And I would say again, the very center two dancers and who you're facing start, everybody finish chain reaction. So they pass, hinge now, there's our left-hand star in the middle, and everybody goes finish with a the right there. I find that I have much more success that way. And in fact, I even, uh, you can bust up there and sit down if you want to. In fact, I even... Um, when I am teaching the chain reaction to the, to the new students, the new advanced dancers, I do this because I think to me it emphasizes, like Robert said, getting those two dancers to stand still. Thank you, Ed. Okay, anybody have any questions or comments on I'm I'm down here so I can give you the mic if you need it. I know this wasn't necessarily a session on how to teach uh, advanced, but I'd be interested in your professional's uh, view of how to teach uh, cast a shadow. Well, that is part of our session. It's both teach ways to teach both advanced and challenge, and then choreography within within those two programs. Um, let me ask you this: since we since we all generally know cast a shadow. What, where's the trouble spot, or where's the spot that you want us to look at specifically? Uh, a couple of trouble spots. The centers, uh, when they extend, sometimes they extend um, always to the right hand when it should be the left hand. Uh, sometimes the, the clover leafer, the center that's looking out, uh, goes too far. They, they don't want to take the, the first center spot that they see they, they would do. Um, and I think the ends don't have nearly as much trouble. Uh, I personally teach it by having both centers facing in or, or we'll start with both centers facing out. I think it's easier to, to show them that way. Okay. Does anybody else have that trouble with, um, uh, with, the, cent with the centers using the wrong hand when they go in to, to do the single hinge and then extend? Well, I'm sorry. Mike Callahan. Sometimes the centers don't do the hinge. They do a three-quarter turn or they go too far and they're not sure which you know how far to go that type of thing and also the the outside two sometimes don't know which hands to cast with so i have them raise their outside hands and that's the hand they're going to cast with when they go back to cast and also a half zoom you know kind of works there too you know and here again you're working the some other call that they should know one of the things that our caller does is he says if you're looking out you're going to start like a clover leaf if you're looking in you're going to do start like a circulate and then he always has the centers do the lollygate parts of primp your hair or do something like that to keep them from going three quarters um, the part that I seem to have the hardest trouble with for, is for the outside uh, the outsides and that's the casting three quarters they the, do the half a zoom and then they trade and that's about it I mean I encourage three quarters in counting walls or trade and go a half more a quarter more and that's consistently where the problem is for cast a shadow for me. It's interesting. Everybody has a different problem on I have a different one. I mean everybody has a different problem. The problem I find is that the center looking out does their loop too sharp and they collide with the people that are casting three quarters as they're coming out of there as they're sliding apart, they collide in there. Um, How about cast the share from a promenade? Uh, does do people use that pretty much here, or because that's the way the call was originally written was from from promenade position? You have to designate who the leaders are. You have to say heads are the leaders. All cast the shadow. Um, let's let's get a square up. Heads lead right, heads lead right and veer left. Um, everybody, everybody, California twirls. So we're in a, in what we considered quote this the standard teaching place for a cast of shadow. We have a left-handed two-faced line with the boys in the middle. So when the lead girl rolls back and the girls are going to 
cast three quarter. The key here is the boy looking out. If he makes his right face loop too short, he will slam into the girl as she's sliding apart after she's done her cast three quarters. So I tell the boy looking out to overdo, to over exaggerate your action to the right. And that the last thing you do should be stepping straight ahead. Off, usually when you see cast a shadow, the person that's doing the loop, the last thing they're, do, they're doing is coming into the center of the wave on a 45 degree angle. If they're doing that, it means the loop was too short. So I tell them, overdo the loop so that the very last thing you're doing is one step perfectly straight ahead. And if you're stepping perfectly straight ahead is the last thing you're doing, then you, knew, then you know that the loop was sufficiently big. All right, cast a shadow. And, of course, everybody here dances perfectly because we're all callers, and we know callers are the best dancers. Okay. Boys run around a girl. Couples circulate. Okay, so now here we're in a right-handed two-face line with the girls in the middle, boys in the end. Here it's the lead girl who is going to do the loop to the left. It's going to be a giant loop to the left so that the very last thing you do is stepping perfectly straight ahead into the near center of the wave. Cast a shadow. Boys using the left hand. The center two girls are having fun in the middle. Okay. All right. So that was the point I wanted to emphasize on cast a shadow. Now, we had somebody else say that... Um, the centers sometimes take wrong, the wrong hands. I've never experienced that. Have you? Uh... Yeah, uh, I have noticed sometimes that the dancers looking in here again, plus dancers who are learning advanced, when they, you know, they're so accustomed to everything being with a right hand, they do tend to sometimes, from the standard teach on cast a shadow, the left-handed two-faced line, Sometimes those dancers extending in will want to take right hands. They'll try to cross extend on you. And the only thing I've ever done that I've found, you know, it, it, I'm not going to say, it, there's no secret to it at all. I just tell the dancers looking, if the, you're the dancer, the center dancer looking in, make certain that you step straight ahead and meet with any hand, whether it be the right hand or the left hand. And that seems to, you know, cure the problem. Just making certain that those center dancers looking in know that they walk straight ahead. They don't veer. They don't step at an angle or anything and meet with that inside hand. That's the only way I know to do it. If Boy, if anybody's got a better way, I'd love to know it. Because sometimes you do see those dancers coming into the middle wanting to use a right hand just because they've been accustomed to it. The only thing that I would look at is uh, I'd be, go back to Ed's idea of, of teaching uh, mainstream and plus with this advance is that I may start doing centers doing a follow your neighbor to, or scoot backs to get used to the handhold that you're going to be using in the middle. Okay. Other yep. what Darrell was just mentioning is I, as I'm looking at this formation if we had the centers a, a, as a teaching technique if we had the centers force a good extend then we've got our outfacers forced into a big loop on the clover leaf because they're going to take a step straight out, and then they've got to go around big on the square, and the centers will come straight ahead to the handhold. If we were to em emphasize that extend, as you comment, as mentioned, I was sitting here looking at this going, well, have the centers extend, and then we're pretty well got the big loop going, and we're going to have the correct handhold in the middle. Does anyone use the... the um I, I know a lot of times what I tell that dancer looking in, out, um, a lot of time I tell them, I try to explain to them that they're literally shadowing that dancer that they're standing beside. And they're going to end up with that dancer. And same way, I, and I always tell the center dancer looking out, take a giant step forward, and then you're going to shadow that dancer that yeah, was beside I've you. I've tried that, and it, it doesn't work because... If the center's looping out, shadowing this person who's moving in, when he, when the center looking out is turning the corner, this person's way down over there. You can't right. shadow them over no. there. Oh, no, exactly. What I mean by that is it gets them headed in the right direction. Because here again, I see a lot of times that that center dancer is so accustomed to doing everything to the right. They want their first 
re, their first reaction is to want to go to the right. And that's the only way. I just use that shadow just to use it to get them headed in the right direction. I don't want them to shadow that person, right. but I just I use it to get them. I want them to get them to head in that direction. Okay. Okay. Other calls that you would like to comment on or have us uh, uh, discuss? Uh, you ever call a two-thirds uh, mini busy and then say, you know, check your hourglass? Well, they're never really in an hourglass. They have to adjust around, and it's technically on paper they're in it, but in the dance floor. They have to make an adjustment to be in it. And what could you comment on that? Well, you know, I think a lot of that goes back to what Ed just said on the cast a shadow. Dancers have a tendency to want to get to a point as quickly and in a uh, the most direct route that they can, and they're really not doing the call. Um, okay, square up, for, and then uh, let's have the heads lead right and veer left. Okay. So we have a right hand two phase line, girls in the middle, boys in the end. And you want everyone to do a two thirds mini busy. All right. If the dancers really, the dancers facing out really do their part of, you know, their step, turn, and step, that's the way I like to explain it to them because that's literally what they're doing. Uh, go ahead. The dancers looking in extend. And the center two dancers hinge. There's their two parts. The other dancers are going to turn and step a good giant step because they're, they're doing as if they were doing a, uh, a turn and deal. And that would bring them right into that halfway point. You're right. They're, they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're never going to step far enough. They, they just don't do it. Oh, you bet. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. You got to prep them for it, precisely. I, I don't call it at A2 just for that reason. Uh, to me, it intuitively feels like a C1 usage of an A2 call. Now, what I do like to do with it a lot is mini busy and whoever the outsides are roll to set up facing diamonds. That gets them in the habit then of stepping out there the way they need where they need to be. Um, all right, finish, finish your mini busy. And and the outsides roll. Okay, and you have facing diamonds. But that's that. Yeah, I better. use that much more. I, you know, I rarely use the two thirds mini busy, but I use this a lot, and and it emphasizes those outside dancers truly getting into those positions. They're going to be in the position if they do the mini busy correctly. Then the roll puts them in the diamond. No, it's it's not it's nothing. <laughs> Once you have a call, then it's, quote, caller judgment as to what you do with that call. Two-thirds, that's the only one where it's, there's that. Yeah, I, I would use the mini busy, and then, then just for flavor, I would throw the roll in for the outsides. And then the rest of it's up to the caller's judgment, you know, how far he takes it from there. Other calls? About uh, facing recycle. What, what about um, it always seems to, to nobody knows, you know, especially the the one that's veering over and hooking on. It always seems to me, for for me, it's a tough call to teach, facing recycle. From a right hand, well, you would teach it from a right hand setup, right? Okay. I mean, facing couples, yeah. Okay. Um, outside's quarter in, and everybody just extend to, a, to make a wave. Boys run around a girl, wheel and deal. The way I teach it is I say the left side person, which is the boy, will step straight ahead and turn around and the, his partner follow him and grab him. Of course, you all know the call. But that seems, I, in teaching a call, I like to, to use what I call off the street terms wherever I can. So if I'd have bring, brought any girl in off the street, had her stand there and say, follow your partner when he turns around and grab his hand, they'll do that. That's, that's the way I do it. I have success with it. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, Mike, the problem that I find on the facing recycle is not so much the bell's position, but the bow's position. 
They'll try to do everything. They'll try to step ahead and meet with a right hand maybe and trade, or they'll do all sorts of things. And so I like Ed. I just tell that bow's position, step straight ahead and turn back toward each other, which takes them right into that direction. And then, and then as they're doing that, that bell dancer beside them just veer or slide out there with them to farm the wave. Like I say, now, I personally find the bow's position to be the hardest part to really? teach myself. I'm, yes. I've not found that. Boys run around a girl. Uh, wheel and deal. We're going to do this thing again. So we have an eight chain through. Um, so when the, of course, another thing you can tell if the, tell the left side dancers here, the boys in this case, when they step forward, how far is stepping forward? Stepping forward is until they are adjacent with the other boy from the couple they're looking at. And when they're adjacent, they turn back. All right, recycle again. Okay. If you could go back to the facing couples. Not being the caller, but one hint to help that um, bell's position. Because we seem to have a problem with they want to go the other way. As the boys or the bow's position steps forward to turn around with your right hand, give a little tug pulling your partner towards you. You know, it's just kind of... Bring them into your hip and then let go. So as you step forward, you're encouraging them to slide over. You know, Roy said something that that uh, that I really like and I really believe in. He said, uh, "Not being a caller, something to the effect." I try to watch the floor and and see what they're doing and why are they doing something, and then try to think what I would do if I were in their position. Or in their place, and it's amazing. A lot of times, someone in the uh, one of the committee meetings this morning says, "Sometimes as callers, we assume just a little bit too much from the dancers." And I think you know, we probably do. So we need to be really specific and precise. On the on the recycler for the benefit of the tape, um, I tell the right hand dancer to do the mother of all for your lefts, and that seems to get their their attention. Between your mother of all veer lefts and his pants falling down, I mean, we're getting a lot out of this thing here. <laughs> um, other calls that you want to... Other calls that you would like to comment on or discuss on, um, on advanced or, uh, or C1? I find that grand three quarter through is is really a simple call, but but dancers for some reason can't do it. I've seen a lot of squares break down on on grand three quarter through. Uh, anyone want to come in on that? Never happened to me. We're no, I, the only reason, the only, only problem that I see with it might be overuse of grand quarter through. <laughs> you know, uh, I know. Um, you know, when we first teach quarter through to the to the new advanced dancers, they fight it at first because they want that. You know, it's so fast, that initial hinge, they want to go too far. And then, you know, maybe we get locked into calling the quarter through and the grand quarter through so much that when you do throw in a grand three quarter through, they're just, you know, it's taking them longer for it to register that that's not a quarter through. I find they always hear the three quarter and they're happy to be able to just relax and cast three quarters and not have to have it be so quick. So I don't, I don't find that a problem. Other, uh, other comments? Uh, does anyone ever have troubles teaching remakes? Because I, I, you know, here again it goes back to the to the uh, quarter through as opposed to the three quarter through. I notice a lot of times uh, when we start teaching the remake. Here again, I find sometimes the dancers want to overrun that first quarter, and you know I try to emphasize to them that you're really just starting out like a quarter through and you're finishing with a three-quarter cast because I know a lot of times when I'll call remake, it, teaching it, you know, specifically, they'll try to overrun that first quarter. They'll go too far and then, you know, by then they've lost it. I'm just curious. Anybody have that, any problem with that? I mean, if they have, a, have trouble, I tell them the, to, uh, if you're coming to the center, look for somebody else coming at you because you're going to trade with them. We're kind of winding down here. Um, any last 
comments on, um, on any calls. But I want to thank uh, Dave Towery and uh, Daryl Lipscomb uh, for being here on the panel and want to thank all of you for being present.